Yeah, that's what it is. Are you guys ready to get started? Yeah. Woo. Yes, I love it. I love it. Bring it. Bring the excitement. Yes. Um, I tell you what, let's say a prayer while I fall out of my chair. I'm not going to fall out of the chair. I'm sorry. That would be hilarious, but I'm sorry. I'm not going to fall out of the chair. But let's do say a prayer, and uh, we'll ask the Lord to bless our time together. Would any of you like to pray? I will do it. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you. We love this time of year that just reminds us of all the good ways you take care of us. Help us to be thankful for those, especially this coming week. Thank you for each student who is here in this class, what a gift they are. I pray that you please help them to learn something new today, something that will help them with their writing and grammar. And I pray that you would just bless the teaching from me today and that it would be according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hey, Josh. Just come on in. All right. So I am checking Grammar 38. And I will tell you what page that is on. Or somebody can tell me what page that is on while I find the PowerPoint. 228. 228. Thank you. All right. So I am checking Grammar Lesson 38 on page 228, and then you guys can go ahead and get your paper set up for the quiz. Page 228. That is lesson 38. That's what I'll be coming around to check. Just make sure that you do just so that if you get something wrong, you're not learning it wrong. Yeah, 100. Yeah. And I sent it late, too. Um, Isaac's mom reminded me, I don't think you sent that. And I'm like, I didn't. So I sent, I sent the answers out late. I think I only sent them yesterday. Yeah, was it yesterday? I don't know. Anyway, your mom reminded me. I was thankful. Here are the definitions. Remember, you do have the noun jobs um, from the sticky note from last week.
one minute. I need all the papers in one minute. So remember, there are these three jobs, and then each of those three jobs had things underneath. Thirty seconds. I'll need all the papers. And turn to the Table of contents, that will be the first thing we go to so that you can highlight the table of contents for All right. We've got busy highlighters coming up today in class. We're going to do a little bit of everything except green. I promise we'll get to green someday. It'll be in the spring. Green are the adverbs. Today, we're going to do a little bit of adjectives. We're going to do punctuation. That's your pink comma, lesson 41. And appositives, which are orange. That tells you they're related to what part of speech? Nouns. Nouns. That's right. Very good. Once you have your table of contents highlighted, we you can meet me at page 238. Page 238. So you'll need your highlighters out, a pencil, grammar book. Can't wait till we don't have to wear these anymore. It'll be a good day. All right. All right. So on page two hundred and thirty-eight, let me get there. Lesson forty. What is the title of lesson forty? What does it say up there? A regular comparison adjective. Yeah, a regular comparison adjective. What does irregular mean? It's not regular, right? It's something is funky about it, right? Man, this thing is like huge. I'm having to make it smaller. There we go. All right. All right. Comparison adjectives. We talked about these last week. Turn over one page or one lesson to 231. The comparison adjectives that you did for homework were. When you're comparing two things or when you're comparing three or more things. All right, so those are the comparison adjectives from Lesson 39, um, but they were pretty regular. If you were comparing two things, then you could use an ER on that adjective or the word more. If you were comparing three or more things, you could use EST or the word most. But Lesson 40, they are irregular. So it's not going to be quite as um, simple. All right, so let's start with the vocabulary up at the top, though. We'll get to, all right, just two here. We have perceptible and susceptible, just those two. Perceptible, susceptible, both of these have to do with the Latin verb paper, which means to take or seize. Perceptible, susceptible. All right, so there's your definitions, just those two for next week. Why is this it's going this way? All right, so let's talk about irregular comparison adjectives. So here in the middle, um, remember, positive just means it's the adjective by itself. Little, good, well, bad, ill, far, many, much, some. It's just the adjective. Comparative is comparing to. 
superlative is comparing three or more. All right. So you are still comparing, but this time the word changes. That's what that says, word. The word itself is going to change. Okay. So, for example, with the, the word little, you can't say little or, or littlest. It actually it doesn't, that's not a word. All right. If you are comparing two things, you would say less. If you're comparing three, you would say least. So the word itself changes. That's the difference here. It's irregular. All right. So for the word good, what would be the comparative of that? Everybody. Better. What about the superlative? Best. All right. Yes. So if you're comparing two subjects in school, math and English, you could say one is better. If you're comparing three, all of your subjects in school, you would say grammar is the best. Right? Yeah. I like to think of it that way. Okay. All right, so the word is going to change. Now, here's a couple of sticky things here. All right, let's look at little and few first. All right, you use little, less, and least with things that cannot be counted. So little are things no count. If you can't count them, you use little. Um, and few is used, few, fewer, and fewest for things that can be counted. You can count these things. Sometimes we can get those confused. When do I use little? When do I use few? Well, if it's something that you cannot count, you would say little. If it's something you can count, then you would say few. Here's an example. Um, Laura, read the sentence that it gives us an example of less because it cannot be counted. He has less patience today than he had yesterday. All right. Can you, you can't count the amount of patience, right? You can't count that. So we would use less. All right. Now, Jacob, read us the example of something that can be counted. We won't hear tests this week. All right. You can count the number of tests. Five. 10, 115, that would be quite a lot of tests. All right, so you can count those, so you use few or a form of that. All right, the same with much or many. These two can get confused as well. You use much if you're talking about things that cannot be counted. You use many if you're talking about things that can. So, Andrew, read us the example here of what something that cannot be counted, and we use much. There wasn't much debate. Yeah, so you can't count debate, all right? You've got so much debate, three debate, five debate. doesn't make sense, all right? So we use much. And Josh, the next sentence that gives us an example of something that can be counted. Many delegates offered opinions. Yeah, so delegates, these are people. You can count people, all right? So we use many or a form of that, all right? Look at these examples here. So I, you can just use your highlighter. So here for uh, letter A, Zoe, read to us letter A, this example. Oliver Ellsworth has little, less interest in the nursery than in math. Yeah, so it's talking about interest. You can't count interest. Although if I could say, if I could count your interest right now, I know it would just count so high, so high. Your interest right now in grandma. Yes, super high. All right, but you can't count interest, so we use the word less, right? Because we use, it's a form of little, little, less, or least for things that cannot be counted. All right, Laura, M, do B. That was the worst tornado we have ever experienced. Can you count tornadoes? Yes. Yeah, you can. So you would use uh, worst in this choice, but it's because, where is the worst? Well, that was actually just the correct adjective from here. Of all the tornadoes, right? It's the worst. So, yeah. All right. Uh, letter C. Rose, you read this one, please. Dad has fewer vacation days this year than in the last year. Yeah, so we can count vacation days, so we use a form of few. All right, turn the page, the top of page 239. Isaac, this one's for you. Letter D. Yeah. 
page. Yeah, I'm sorry, you didn't have to turn the page, did you? Just go like this. Just look in. Okay, top of page 239. Neo Wigs. Wigs. Yes. Wigs are people. You can count people. So we use many. We use many. Okay. All right. That seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Down here in the middle, page 238, uh, we do want to avoid double comparisons. So you're not going to use more and ER at the same time. You're not going to use most and EST at the same time, right? So, Laura, read us this no sentence about Julita because I think it sounds funny. Julita was more better than Juanita at soccer. Yeah, so you're not going to use both of those in the same sentence. It sounds kind of silly, right? So you would just say Julita was better. And do the same thing, Jacob. The next example, do the no. And Oliver the most clever essay. Yeah, that, that sounds silly. You wouldn't use both of those. You would use just one. All right, so just cleverest. All right, and then a little word about absolute adjectives. There are some adjectives that you don't change at all. All right, so adjectives that represent an ultimate condition. It sounds like a, um, like a, a ninja move, ultimate condition. All right, like a square. Round, maximum, equal, fatal, unique. Dead is an ultimate condition. You can't, if you're dead, you're dead. You can't have one person is deader than another. All right? Um, if you have two squares, you have two squares. You're not going to have one square is more square than the other. All right? So these are ultimate conditions. All right? And when you have an ultimate conditions, uh, an ultimate condition, then... Uh, you do not make comparisons with absolute adjectives. You can modify them a little bit with these words, almost, near, and nearly. All right, but you're not going, there's not going to be a comparison. You can't compare absolute adjectives. Here's some examples of that in here. Um, so letter A, the king was, which one of those than the queen? This is actually just a comparison. You're comparing two things. So is it n nosier or more nosier? Just nosier, right? We're not, we can't have double. No, that sounds strange. Okay. Uh, yesterday was the blank day of my life. This is just a comparison. Worst, right. You're not going to have the most worst. You can't have two. All right, and this is going to be an absolute adjective. Chrissy had the most unique or unique hairdo. You would think it would be most unique, but it's an absolute adjective. You can't have one uniquer than the other. If they're both unique, they're unique. It would just be unique. Right? Chrissy had the unique hairdo. All right? That's an absolute adjective. All right. Rock and roll. Let's do some practice. So grab your highlighter. You're going to choose the correct adjective. Just highlight it. For A through F here in the middle. And be careful of those that are little or few, much or many. There's a lot of examples in there, A through F, with the difference between those. Good to go. You ready to talk about these? All right. Well, let's start back with Andrew. Will you just read the answer for A for us? Much. Much. You want me to read first? No, just the answer is good. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Josh, B. Many. Zoe, C. Best. Best. Uh, 
Laura D. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yep. Now this Laura, E. Oh, wrong Laura. <laughs> no, it's not the wrong Laura. I, it was my fault. I should have said Laura M. Little? Yep, it's little. And F rose further. There we go. That's pretty simple, right? Rock and roll. Rock and roll. All right. Um, very good. Let's go to your diagrams. Go right on to the diagrams. I don't think we need extra practice with that. I think you guys got it. All right. So let's do, let's start off with your highlighting. No pencil, no diagramming. I want you to highlight. We'll highlight. Go ahead, 28, 29, and 30. Go ahead and highlight the parts of these sentences. Remember, you're going to start with what? All right, you're going to start with your subject and, all right, and, yeah, the direct object. All right, so you're going to start with those. What if your verb is a linking verb? All right, so then you look for a predicate nominative or predicate adverb. All right, so just highlight. No diagramming. You'll do that at home. But do, uh, do highlight. Let's see if we can get those for help. you that one of these sentences does have a linking verb, but it's only one. So two have action verbs, one has a linking verb. All right, we'll, we'll start talking about it 30 seconds. I, have to, I always look up at the clock. There's no second hand on that clock. I don't know why I do that. Just have it. I'm going to look here. All right, 20 seconds, we'll talk about these together. Highlight these together. Save the diagramming for home, but I don't mind, we'll highlight to, to kind of help you guys out. I know these are tough. You got five, four, three, two, let's go. All right, 28, everybody, subject. Pam. Uh, 29, subject. Seeds. Very good. 30. Subject. Okay. Fruits. Vegetables. Very good. Uh, let's go to the verbs. All right. 28. What is the verb? Enjoys. Enjoys. What kind? Action. That is an action. Right. 29. Verb. Have begun. Have begun. There it is. All right. And is it linking or is it action? action. That is action. Excellent. And 30. Do look. Do look. Linking or action. There's the linking verb right there. All right, so let's go back up to 28. Um, we have both planting and harvesting. Uh, let's see. Do we have a direct object? Yes. yes. What is it? Yes. What kind of words are those? Gerund. They're gerunds. Yeah, make a note to yourself that those are gerunds. They get a little Egyptian dance there in your sentence, right? Okay. Um, we have, what else? What is left in this sentence? What are they? Yes. Correlate of conjunctions. Right. So you will make a crayon. And remember that you'll have both and will be on the dotted line. One will be on one side and one will be on the other side. All right. And it's your direct object. All right, number 29, seeds have begun. To sprout. What is to sprout? It is an infinitive, so you're going to do one of these lounge chair looking things in your sentence. And where, are we, where do we diagram it? Direct object. It's the direct object, right. All right. And we've got one more word in that sentence. What is it? Where does it go? V is an adjective. It will. That's right. So I'm going to highlight that in yellow. It's an adjective. 
Even though you, I don't think you can see it very well. There you go. All right, last one. Uh, we have fruits do look. No, I'm sorry. Fruits and vegetables do look. All right, what do we do with and? What is that? Conjunction. That's your conjunction. You got another crayon here. It'll be in the subject. What is these? Adjective. That's going to be an adjective. It goes where? And what do we do with fresh? It's a P adjective. It's an adjective, right. But it is, you're right, it is going to be a slanted line back towards the subject. All right, very good. You guys are getting good at these. I love it. All right, let's turn the page, 41. Do a little comma action. A little comma, comma action. Comma, 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 comma. All right. So we need some pink. We use pink for punctuation and prepositions. Punctuation and prepositions. All right. This is the comma part one, people. There's like 50 parts. No, there's not. There's like maybe three or four or five. There we go. All right. The comma today is going to be very uh, review for you, though. All right, we've got six words in here. What? Six of them in here. All right, they look similar to each other, though. All right, so we have already right here and already. All right, they're similar but a little different in how they're spelled and their meanings are different. So you'll need to know the difference between those. All right and did you know this? This all right is not a word. You need to know that. This all right is not a word. If you look it up in the dictionary, it will say, did you mean this one? Because this one is not a word. I'm shocked. I, so I was actually shocked too. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I think I've actually written that before. <laughs> So I think it was shocking to me too. Were you just saying that to be for real or just? Real. Okay. I was saying it for real. All right, but not anymore. I'm not gonna use it anymore. All right, and then we have this all together and this all together. Both are words, similar, spelled a little different, different meaning. So there are six of them in there. All right, you got pinky warmed up. Here we go, pink, pink, pink. All right, there's three things we're going to look at with the comma. The first, date. Well, first of all, commas. Get this definition right here, commas. We use commas to group words that belong together and to separate those that do not. A comma is a pause in the sentence. A pause in the sentence. And you guys need to learn how to use that comma, baby. All right, because I read your essays and you'll go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. <gasps> Breathe. Put a comma in there somewhere. All right, so a comma, we're going to use, we're going to learn how to use this, guys. Commas group words that belong together and they separate those that do not. It's a pause, a pause in your sentence. You take a breath and then you keep going. All right, let's talk about commas in a date. Here we go. All right, so you would put a comma here, right? So you have the date and you separate that from the year. So that's where the comma goes. September 17th, comma, 1787. That was a few years ago. A few? A few, yeah. All right, another example is right here. Same date, but now it's in a sentence. So we, we have the same comma as we did before, but now we put a comma after the year because it's in a sentence. So we separate that from the sentence. There's a pause there. On September 17, 1787, 39 men, blah, 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 blah. All right, so when you're reading, you come to a comma, you pause. All right, and one more example down here, we would add a day of the week. Guess what? There's a comma. A comma separates a day of the week from the year. And this comma is the same. 
the month and day, comma, then the year. That is the same in all the examples. That is the same in all the examples. We've got a comma here when we talk about a day of the week. Now, if it's just the month and the year, no comma needed. All right, here in this sentence, we have the month and the year. No comma is needed in that example. I don't get to circle anything in red. No comma needed. All right. Uh, here at the bottom of page 244, put those commas in there. You can just use your highlighter. Put the commas in where they go. There are three needed. Where's the first one? After Thursday. After Thursday. Where's the second one? After 2002. There is one after 2002. And where's the last one? After July 4th. After July 4th. There they are. One, two, three. All right. Parts of an address. That's um, middle of page 245. All right. So we're going to use commas to separate the parts of an address and the names of their geographical places or political divisions. All right, so what does all that mean? Just highlight where these commas are, all right? So here you have the address, the number and the road, there's a comma, the city, comma, state. There's an example. All right, so we have the number, the road of an address, comma, city, comma, state. And you'll notice it's in the same in the example underneath. 1744 Jerry Street, comma, city, comma, state. All right, here are some examples beginning with Atlanta, Georgia. So we've got the city, the state, and the country. If all three are given, commas in between. City, comma, state, comma, and then we have the country. City, comma. Oxford, comma, England, comma, UK. All right, and the same if it's just the country and the continent. Quito, I'm sorry, that's a city. Ecuador, the country. Here we have Beijing, comma, I guess the state. How would you, how would you guys say this? What is it? Say it. How would you say that? The Hinge Cow. <laughs> Dang I don't know. That's probably pretty good. All right, and then a comma there. So between city and states, between states and country. All right. Uh, and here in this example, Alexander Hamilton, we have a comma after Nevis. That's a city. West Indies, comma. Two commas there in this sentence. This is an example of it in the sentence, comma after both. All right, A and B, put the commas in. A and B, put the commas in. This example here, example two, A and B, put the commas in. For A, you're going to need three. Woo, three commas in there, people. B, you're going to need two All right, A, where, did, where, is, where does the comma go? After Road. After, Rhode, Marysville. after Marysville. Mm -hmm. After New York. All right, in B, where do they go? Trenton. After Trenton? New Jersey. New Jersey. There they are. Good. All right, one more example in the middle of page 246. This is our last. Example of using the comma, words in a series. All right, so if you have three or more words or phrases, oh, that was a terrible line, Mrs. Smith. Three or more words or phrases in a series, you put a comma in between. This is review. You've heard this before. So here in this example sentence, we have three men, men's names. Daniel Webster, comma, Rufus Choate, comma, and... Robert Winthrop. Notice that the comma is first and then the word and, and then there is no more comma. It's just a comma after each item in the list, and we do put a comma before 
the word and. All right, we have self-confidence, comma, mild haughtiness, comma, what a great sentence, and slight hyperbole. Interesting sentence there. All right, let's go to some practice. Turn to page 247, 247. All right, let's do... F, G, and H right here. F, G, and H. All right, so these are dates. With your highlighter, just put in a comma, F, G, and H for the date. These are all date examples. You should get two for each one. Two commas in each of those sentence examples. All right, in F, where are the commas, people? All right, after June 18th and after the year, right, after 1787. What about G, Josh? <laughs> after July 10th, yeah, there you go. And then where else, everybody? After the year 1787, there you go. And H, two more. Thursday, November 28th, and there you go. All right, the next group, these are all commas in an address. All right, so put the commas in, I, J, K. All of them are in an address. In I, you should get two. In J, you should get two. In K, three people. You're going to get three commas in letter K. All right, I, where did my commas go? Philadelphia, comma. Pennsylvania, comma. Yep. How about J? Anchorage. Anchorage, comma. Alaska, Alaska comma. All right, K. Dublin, Dublin comma. Ireland, Ireland comma. UK. UK, comma. Yeah. All right, and the last group here, these are in a, items in a series. All right, so you need a comma after every item in the series. Go. I'm not going to tell you on this one. You guys are so smart. I'm just going to see if you can figure it out, which I know you can. We're going to talk about these in 15 seconds. All right, L, where do I put a comma? Just call out the word that I put the comma after. Happiness. Happiness. Security. Security. Yes, that's it. Just those two places. What about M? Stability. Stability. Respect. Respect. And that's it. All right, N. January. January. March. May. May. July. August, October, that's it, that's all of them, that's it, yeah, that's all you need, all right, all right, I'm going to give you a gift, let's do a little review, on page 248, let's look at number six, number six, all right, is it less? Or is it fewer? Which one is it? Fewer. fewer. All right, less. so if you, it's less if you cannot count. It's fewer if you can count. Can you count tomato plants? Yes. Yes. So it is fewer. Yeah, because you can count them. Yeah, so six is F. What about number nine? Number nine. Is it much or is it many? All right, so if it's much, you cannot count. If it's many, you can count. Can you count mangoes? Yes. 
Yes. So is it much or many? It's many. All right. Turn to number 18. Go to number 18. Number 18. All right. Uh, let's see. Andrew, can you read number 18 for us, please? Without any rights, Camelot says... Oh, I'm sorry. On page 249. Yes. Yeah, read the instructions, please, Andrew. Oh. I'm sorry. You are in the right place. In this sentence, write the verb phrase and label it active or passive voice. All right. So we're looking for active or passive voice. So now read the sentence for us. Without any rights, Camelot citizens have been oppressed. Okay. So what is the verb phrase, everybody? Have been oppressed. Is it active or is it passive? Passive. It is passive. Why? Because they're being, it's being done to them. Yes. All right. How can we make it active? Without any rights, let's make it active. Let's make it a stronger verb. Camelot citizens were distressed. Uh, were distressed is better. Can we say they suffered without any rights? Camelot citizens suffered. All right, so that would be more active, right? That would be an action verb. Um, but you're right. It is passive. It is a to be verb. If it is a to be verb, that makes it passive. Look at number 21. Number 21, Josh, will you read number 21 for us? Write the verb phrase in this sentence and label it transitive or intransitive. All right. What makes the difference between a transitive and an intransitive verb? Anybody remember? It, like, it matters if there's like a um, direct object or a predicate noun because the predicate has a to after it. Okay, it's a direct object. You're right, Zoe. So if it is a transitive verb, then it's going to have a direct object. So does this have a direct object? All right, what is my verb phrase? It's just creates. I don't know. They say phrase to throw you off. It's just creates. Is that an action verb? Yes. Hank creates what? Town. All right. So if it has an action verb, it has a direct object, then it is transitive. All right, so number 21, creates is a verb, it's transitive. All right, number 22, Zoe, read this for us, please. Write the four principal parts, present tense, present participle, past tense, and past participle of the verb we. We's. All right, I want you to go back to lesson 13. That is on page 75. I want you to go ahead and do this one. This is just good review for us. All right, these four principal verb parts. Go back to page 75 and figure this out for the verb we's, which is a great, that's a great verb to do. We's. We's. It's fun to say. You want to say it, don't you? Wees. Wees. All right, page 75. Go back, and I want you to write the present tense, the present participle, the past tense, and the past participle right back here on page 249. We've talked about these before. They're back on page 75, lesson 13. All right, are we ready to go? What's the present tense? What is it? Wheezes. Wheezes. <laughs> write that down. Wheezes. Why in the world do you spell that? All right, it's wheezes. All right. Present participle is wheezing. Right. Sometimes my cat does that. It's fur in its nose or something. Ugh. Ugh. All right, past tense. Weeds. There you go. And the past participle. There you go. It's been a while since we've done these, isn't it? Have you missed them? Yes. Have you missed them? All right, let's do 23. Another, no, yeah, another good review. Oh, yeah, the noun jobs. All right, in the sentence, write whether the italicized noun, here it is, humor. Is that nominative? Nominative, is it objective? 
or possessive. The noun jobs from last week. Which one is it? Number 23. Is there one that you can, you know it's not? It's not possessive. Right, there's no ownership, there's no apostrophe S. Bye-bye. All right. So is it the subject of a sentence? Or is it a predicate noun? Well, let's see. Mark Twain shifts. Is this an action verb or a linking verb? Action. It's action. So we're not going to have a predicate noun, so it's not nominative. So it is objective. Oh, all right, 24. Write whether this word group is a phrase or a clause. If it is, which one has both? The phrase or the clause? clause? The clause will have both a subject and a verb, right? All right, so before Merlin succumbs to the poisonous gas, is that a phrase or a clause? A clause. It's got both. Right? Uh, and that's all the review you get. That's all the review you get. All right. Um, so these sentences, you're going to work on your own. Let's go to lesson 42. Lesson 42. All right, one more, people. Hang with me. What is lesson 42 called? A positive. What does it have to do with because it's an orange? It has something to do with the nouns. All right, so this is orange. Does it look orange up here? Yeah. Eh, it's orange. It is, yeah. I, sorry about that. All right, so this is orange, a positive. All right, this is it. Last lesson to go through. We get a break, and then we'll talk about the necklace. All right, only two vocabulary here. Agenda, agitate. Both of them relate to the Latin word, which means go, drive, lead, or do. Agenda, agitate. All right, grab your orange. Let's do a positive. Here we go. This is what they are. You'll want to highlight this definition. A group of words that immediately follows a noun to rename the noun or give more information about the noun. That is what is called an appositive. It renames, it gives more information about the noun. It's an appositive. So they underlined, but I highlighted in orange, the examples in these sentences. All right. Alexander Hamilton, one of the authors of The Federalist, that is in a positive. It gives us more information about our noun here. Okay. That's the first example. The second example here, the first Secretary of Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, all right, that names who that is. So that is an example of an appositive. Because it, it renames our subject. Both of them, you'll notice, have commas. Did you hear the pause? The first Secretary of Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, established, all right, everywhere you pause, those are commas. There. Now, sometimes your positive is not separated by commas. Look at this last sentence. The opportunist Aaron Burr shot and killed his arch enemy, Alexander Hamilton. Both of those give us more information about those nouns, and so they are a positive. All right? Simple enough. Look at the bottom. Look at the bottom. So at the bottom of page 251, you can use a positive to combine choppy sentences, and you can make one good long sentence. So for example, um, Rose, read this these two choppy sentences here at the bottom. Robert Yates was a slaveholder. Robert Yates was opposed, was, uh, Robert Yates opposed popular government. Good for Robert Yates. All right, now read to us, Rose, how we can rewrite that using an appositive. Robert Yates, a slaveholder, opposed popular government. All right, and that appositive is a slaveholder. It renames our subject, okay? Easy enough. How do we diagram this? All right, so in the middle of page 252, 
you diagram in a positive by placing it in parentheses beside the noun. It's in parentheses beside the noun it describes or renames. And if there are any modifiers, adjectives, they go directly underneath the apposite because that's what they're describing. So there's an example here. I want you to do these two examples. Do you see these two examples that I wrote in? Tank, my dog, needs a bath. I want you to diagram that over here on the side, or if you have more room at the bottom, you can do it there. Grab your pencil and diagram tank, my dog, needs a bath. What is the appositive in that sentence? Dog. My dog, right. So, well, it's really dog, you're right. Dog, and then my would be describing dog. Uh, the second sentence, I also want you to diagram this. The insect, a cockroach, is crawling. The insect, a cockroach, is crawling. Di diagram both of those, please. Sentence number one, what is the subject? Tank. All right, so we have an appositive, dog, in parentheses, beside tank, and then my under dog. Is that how you have yours? It looks good. And how does the rest of this go? What's the verb? Needs. All right, needs what? Bad. It is a direct object. A underneath that. Is this what your sentence looks like? Give yourself a pat on the back. You're so good. Diagramming is your thing. You love it. All right, let's do the next one. The insect, a cockroach, is crawling. What's the subject? Insect. Insect. What's the appositive? Cockroach. That's a lovely sentence to do, isn't it? Yes. Yes. All right. We've got the A. What's my verb? Yeah. The is crawling. There you go. Does your sentence look like this? Pat on the back, pat on the back, cheer, cheer. Grammar is great, grammar is fun. High five. Very nice. Very nice. All right, turn to page 253. We're almost there. You're rounding third. You're coming home. All right, page 253, D, E, and F right here in the middle. Just highlight the appositive. Let's just um, make sure that we know what these appositives are. Highlight them. D, E, and F. All right, in letter D, what is the appositive? William Livingston. William Livingston, there he is. In E. A vigorous wig. A vigorous wig. And uh, F. Oh, that's a diagram in sentence, that it. Well, what is the um, appositive? A talented writer. There you go. Don't, you don't have to diagram it. All right. And then two more, G and H. This time, oh, I have to cough. <coughs> Sorry, it really was just a little in my throat. All right, it's all good. This time, you're going to use an appositive and combine these two sentences together. You don't need to rewrite it. Grab your pencil, mark out what you don't need. If you need to add punctuation, put it in. Just these two, G and H. We're combining these two separate sentences into one sentence. We're going to create an appositive. All right. 
All right, so letter G. Um, what you could have done is we don't need to, we're going to take out this Anti-Federalist. We don't need that one. Anti-Federalist, and we're going to take out the verb. Comma. Opponents of Federalists. Comma. Believe that the Constitution, blah, 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 blah. So we took out some words and we created this appositive right here, opponents of Federalists. All right, and letter H, we don't need to repeat the Federalist Papers. We're going to take that out. James Madison wrote some of the Federalist Papers, comma, and we're going to take out work, the verb. Essays explaining that the new blah, 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 blah. There we go. Okay. You'll have fun with that. All right, very good. And you're on your own for the diagrams. It's just these two. Okay, you can close up your grammar. Go take a break. Go take a break. We'll talk about the necklace when you get back. You also have a different, you don't have your Purdue mask on either. You switch to Just with the basketball. Are you ready for basketball season? Are they going to have basketball season? You are. Yeah. Yay. Well, I play baseball, so. Are they going to? Uh, I don't know. It's always hands off at the school. Yeah. And I know that Judy, I know the, the Jays thing at Lewis, where the club is a play. Yeah. Is anybody practicing yet in college basketball? I know they're supposed to play, just in their conference, but I've already looked at team schedules. So they, they do have a schedule then? Yes. Good. All the are practicing. Are they? <laughs> Well, judging from their last season, they need to practice. You want to get your state fan? I'm really not either, but they didn't have a terrific season. Yeah. Okay. So, is everybody back? Laura? Could you close that door, please? I don't know that anybody wants to hear our discussion about the necklace. I'm sure everyone does. It was so interesting, right? Um, tell us, let's just have a discussion about the necklace. Um, tell, tell, tell us something about the necklace. Anything that you remember, does anything stick out to you? Let's just open it up to any comment. Selfish. You think so? Why? I think uh, maybe because she did it for herself, and she didn't really want to keep on to her just to have some money. Or okay. I think that's the definition of a hometown selfie. Why would you say that? Because she's constantly like asking you for things. Yeah. She's really satisfied. She's never okay. Good. All right. Um, tell me about, what is her name? Can we say her name is Matilda? Yeah. yeah. Not uh, math girl. Mathilde. Mathilde. <laughs> All right. So you don't 
gonna have to write this down. We're just gonna have a, a fun discussion. All right, so tell me about her. I'm just gonna make a circle here in, let's say the beginning to the middle of the story. This is before, well, what important event happens in the middle that kind of changes the whole story? She loses. she loses the necklace. All right, so let's look at the beginning to the middle of this story. What is she like? Manipulative. All right, manipulative. so manipulative. Uh, how do you know? What's the proof? I mean, that's just what I got about reading the character. She always seemed to always want something, and she always seemed to make her husband what? get it for her. All right, so when she... she when she got the invitation, she sort of manipulated all right, so she guilts her husband into stuff, right? What what else would you say she's like in the beginning to when she loses the necklace? She's never content. Okay, so she's discontent. What's your proof? Well, the whole, when it was described in the beginning, there was that whole, like, paragraph on how she came up with this whole plan to, like, how she hated her house and, like, Okay, yeah, so we remember she hated her house, uh, doesn't like to visit friends. Why Why not? Because her friend has, like, everything she wants. Okay, doesn't like to visit maybe her rich friend. Okay, what else do we know about her in the beginning to the middle? She, she tries to make plans. She tries to look as nice as she can. So what do you call a person that does that? That they Vain. It's, that's good. Yeah, if they are so focused. I think she's prideful, but it's basically the same thing as vain. Vain. A, uh, it's, it's a V. A, so more concerned about how she looks, right? Um, a person who is vain is, is way more concerned about their outside than their inside. Um, so she's more concerned about outside, right? How she looks. Um, how other people think of her, right? Um, what else? Pride. Okay, pride. Well, what's the proof? Well, she won't visit her friends because she's, I just feel like she's prideful because she won't visit her friends because her friend, like, has a castle on her. And so she's prideful because she thinks she deserves all that stuff. All right. She deserves... <laughs> stuff, right? All right, let's just abbreviate it here. She deserves stuff, right? Okay, what else? Anything else about her? These are good. Um, so she is these things, and what kind of husband does she have? A very, very nice one. He's <laughs> <laughs> kind of just like a regular guy. He is, right? I just feel bad for him. Do you? Why do you feel bad for him? Just to buy all this crap for her. <laughs> and she's always, she's like, oh, not this one. Yeah, okay. Well, what, what would we call that? So he does try to make, make her, her happy. So he's unselfish. He's he unselfish. perhaps is. He's very sacrificial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he does these things for her. How does she feel about them? She doesn't care. <laughs> she doesn't care, right? She yeah. is still, a couple of you wrote this. Uh, she is still ungrateful, right? Entitled to them. Entitled. What does that mean? That's a good one. Like, like having them and just, it, it had to happen. It should be the way the world She should have them, right? She's entitled. This It's her right to them, right? Okay, to the stuff. She has a right to the stuff, right? Okay. Uh, tell me more about her husband. All right, so... You guys like him? Yes. You feel sorry for him? Why do you feel sorry for him? Tell me more. I want to hear from over here. Why do you feel sorry for him? He's just stuck with this horrible person as his wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Huh? What about in the middle? Do you, anybody feel sorry for him here? I guess. I I do feel like he he's a good char like he is a good character. He's sacrificial. Also though. His, his husband is a bit deceptive. Like he's the one who told her to write to the friend about saying that they they broke the class True. instead of losing it. True. Yeah. So it gives them more time to try to find it, right? Yes. Okay. All right. I just feel like she's very content because whenever she, he like 
So he obviously, you know, has a very ordinary job. He makes an ordinary, you know, little salary. What does he feel about that? He's happy with his life. He's okay with it, right? He has what he has, right? He's content. How does she feel about it? She hates it. He wants to be the richest person. He does. All right, she, she hates it, right? She deserves better. Uh, she, she wants she, to be famous and all that. She does. She wants the attention. On her. <laughs> she does. Okay. All right. So here we have her in the beginning to the middle. This is kind of who who we we get an idea of the kind of character that she is here. But something changes in the middle of the story, right? What what changes when she loses the necklace, Laura? What changes? I mean, I, I said that she learned a, learned her lesson and like not to be so greedy for the stuff that she wants. Okay, you think so? Let's talk about it. So, how do we see her after that event? I'll do another one here. Oh, this is so light. Let me not do that red. How about this one? I'm trying to see. All right. So this is after she loses the necklace to the end of the story. All right, so how do we see Matilda here? Humble. What's the proof? Like, she kind of, she kind of just like gave up on her dreams. And she, in the start, she started helping her dreams instead of helping her husband work to get all the money back. Okay. I thought she was happy. What was that, Laura? I thought she was happy. So she told her friend the truth. Yeah. Why couldn't she do that 10 years ago? Because she was so obsessed with like just denying it, I guess. Why why couldn't she tell her 10 years ago? Keep go further than that. She, what she kind of person is she here she's, that prevents her from telling her friend? She's too prideful to keep it close with her for the rest of her life. Yes. Because she was never told. Yes. Alright. So here she's humble. She told her friend the truth. All right, so this right here, this one right here. So we see this here in the beginning, definitely there. And how does this affect this? But how does this affect it? I don't remember why. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, she would have told her friend that she lost the award. Her friend probably would have told her that she didn't have to buy a $50,000 necklace. It was about forty thousand dollars, and the faith was about five hundred. I looked it up. I don't know francs. I had to Google it. It was like five hundred at most. That's even cheaper. Definitely way cheaper. All right, so keep going, Jacob. So like instead, if she would have told her friend, she would have had to do like ten years of working. She would not have been able to live a better life. Right. Yeah. We're going to come back to this. This is a big I mean, one. On hand, what else is she here? What else do we see her here? This is a very different looking person, right? What does she look like here? She's old. She, she, <laughs> she looks old. We're just trying to tell you. Yes. Just, she's I mean, how do we know that her friend didn't even recognize her, right? Yeah, her friend didn't even recognize her um, when she approached her. Uh, what has she been doing? Working, working. <laughs> Hard working, right? All right, she's been scrubbing floors. It, tell us, it tells us that, scrubbing floors, no maid. All right, she's been doing all of this hard work. Um, I think we also see this. How do we see this? Here it is again. How, how do we see this in this part of her life? Um, I think there's pride also in that part of her life because like when she's telling, when she goes up to her friend, she says, it's all, it's on your account that I have these sorrows. 
it wasn't really the friend's account. It, it was technically her. It was kind of her. She could have admitted it and, and, and um, and so, like said what happened, and she wouldn't have had to go through all these trials. Well, it's true. Well, I mean, she was still pregnant. Right, and <laughs> I remember a couple of you wrote this in big bold letters. It takes her how long? Ten years to tell the truth. <laughs> Ten years to tell a friend the truth about what happened. Um, tell me about the ending. Just was, slaps you in the face, doesn't it? Yeah. It was kind of funny and kind of sad at the same time. <laughs> Explain. Because it was funny because it was like that was just completely unexpected. But it was sad because of like she was going through so much pain and she had to like. It was sad. Did you just like immediately go? Seriously. <laughs> All right, tell us about what you just said. Um, it's kind of ironic to say, because like... I'll tell us what irony is. Well, because she was getting her period. Okay, different than what you expected to happen. All right, keep going. This is good. Like, yeah. the whole time, it was this big deal. The whole time, the necklace was the most, a lot of her life. Trying to get it back, and then at the end, it was like, oh, it's almost nothing. Nothing. Right? All for was it all for nothing? Yes. I mean, it changed her character. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't really wasted. So it, it, it was a hard experience to live through, but it changed. Import, it made an important change. It was still kind of wasted, but it wasn't wasted on her character. It was still even worse for the husband. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> like he didn't even need to Why? Yeah, why? This poor guy. And, and then he has to help her pay for the debt for all those ten years too. And then he finds out at dinner that. What was that conversation like at dinner that night? It was probably a little annoyed. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take her 10 years to tell him. Right? What, what was their conversation like, Rose? What do you think? When they when she goes home to dinner that night, what do you think? It's really funny. Like, really funny. Like, really funny. <laughs> it's actually only 400 bucks. How funny is that? How Funny is that? Wait, you're kidding, right? Yeah. Well, good thing you didn't get to buy that gun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the rest of your essay. Let's talk about the rest of your essay. So I put on, I gave all of you a copy of this. This was um, one of your classmates' paragraphs two and three. And there were a, a few good examples. This one fit on the page. That's why I got this one. Um, all right, so here are some things that about half of you did not do. And I want to make some reminders to you. Also, please let me remind you, it's a rough draft. Did you guys see your copy that I emailed to you this morning? And you're like, oh, all the red, Mrs. Meese, please, you're killing my paragraph. It's just a rough draft, all right? It's just a rough draft. So um, I just wanted to draw your attention to some things that you'll need to fix, you need to uh, change, um, but it doesn't mean that your paragraphs are terrible, you did an awful job, Mrs. Meese hates me. It doesn't mean that at all, all right? You guys are fantastic. It just means I just wanna help you become better writers um, and learn how to analyze. I think analyze is tough. It's hard. It's not black and white. It's not a summary of the story. It's your interpreting in a story in your own way. And that, that's harder to do. So we're just in different places in learning how to do that. All right. One of the things that this person does well, you'll notice that this person's first paragraph is from here. The beginning to the middle of the story. Her second paragraph is from here. So it's from the middle to the end. And that's what I want you to do. If you look, I'll show it to you right now, on the, oh no, it totally like took them away. I'm going to have to like open them up again. Sorry. So much work. Oh, it's right here. Okay. 
So you'll notice on the checklist, and this is exactly what I use to grade your paper. All right, this is exactly what I'm going to use to grade your essay. I'm just going to click through that checklist. Do I see that? Do I see that you have that in yours? If you do, you do. If you don't, then it's um, points deducted. All right, but you'll notice right here in this first paragraph, your first character trait should be from the beginning to the middle. Oh, sorry, drawing lines again. All right, so it's from the beginning to the middle. The second character trait is from the middle to the end. So this is where your first character trait should be. This is where the second one is, okay? Because it's different, all right? If, if you just gave me two adjectives, two character traits from here, you're missing out on this whole part of the story, right? So I need one from here, and I need one from here, okay? So that number one, um, for your next due date, you've got to write the whole essay, so you'll be doing this intro paragraph. So if you need to change things, there's still time to do it, all right? Um, all right, second thing to note, where did it go? Uh, there we go. All right, second thing to note about this, transitions, transitions. You need to get used to using transitions in your essay, okay? Um, this person has some good ones at the beginning of the story, near the end of the story. Those are some good transitions. You'll notice in the folder, the homework folder, that I did put in there a little gifty for you. Ooh, a gifty. Miss Denise, what is this gifty? Well, you're going to love it because it has everything to do with transitions. Oh. Here we go. No, it's not a hundred bucks. I wish I could give you a hundred bucks. No, 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 sorry. It's even better than a hundred bucks though. One. Is it two hundred? Better. Better. A it's million one. dollars. One cent. Transitions for essays. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! Uh, Ta-da! There we go. Better than a hundred dollars. All right. So it's right in the homework folder. If you're like, I'm, I'm not sure what transitions you're talking about. Here are some. There are some examples that you can use in the beginning paragraphs, the beginning of your essay, the middle of your essay, and to conclude your essay. There's a lot of choices here. All right, so if you did not put transitions in your essay, you need to do that. All right, you'll notice on the checklist, Dun, dun, dun. Transition. Miss Meese is looking for them. All right, so you got to have those transitions. All right. Uh, what else do we have on that sheet that you need to look at? Uh, nope, not this. Let's get back to this. Yep, here we go. All right. Um, transitions. What else? What's the second check? box thing on that sheet that you have? Um, one character trait. One character trait is in page 90 to help with your quotations in this paragraph. Okay. Section. Yep, there we go. All right, so in the book, on page 90, I can show it to you. Right. Wait, where's my book? I've got it. It's, oh, it's right here in front of me. Uh, okay. I think I wrote this on most of yours, but if I did not, it's on this paper. All right, page 90, there's a little section down here. It says remember, and down here it tells you how you're supposed to put in quotes from a story into your writing. All right, um, quite a lot of you are using too much quote, way too much quote. All right, so you only need to use what is absolutely necessary. Repeat that to me. I only need to use what is absolutely, absolutely necessary. necessary. Now I need everybody. I only, only need to use what is absolutely necessary. Okay, um, and the way that you put those into your writing, it tells you right here. 
All right, so you use, you put them in quotation marks, and then you need to put the page number in parentheses after it. It's the page number in the book of where that quote is. All right, there's only three page numbers to choose from. 82, 83, 84, 85. There's, okay, we're still talking about this. Get that back out on your, get it back out. We're still talking about it. I did not tell you to pack up. I have not told you to pack up. I still have seven minutes. Where's your, where's the paper? Open it up, open it up. All right. So for your rough draft, you get a practice at this, but it's right here on page 90. You put, and most of you did this. You pulled out the quote from the story. You put it in quotation marks, but now you've got to add the page number beside it. Okay, the page number from where that quote came from. Um, right beside it. Okay, so most everybody, all of you need to, to remember to do that. Okay? Um, you only need one character trait. Don't put two here. Don't say at the beginning of the story, Matilda appears manipulative and discontent. You got to choose one, and that whole paragraph is going to be about that one. All right. Um, all right. Last thing, let's just make sure that we're clear on what I will be looking for in your timeline. Full screen. Here we go, baby. All right. So, your rough draft, which is due when? Do Monday. All right. Now, if I know it's over Thanksgiving holiday, so you you'll have the rough draft and your final, and here's Thanksgiving. So if you want, you could go ahead, get this rough draft out this week, send it to me, free and clear weekend, um, and then. You know, the final copy is not due until November 30th. You probably are back in town and back to school on November 30th, all right? So you would have this day, November 30th, that you could do your final copy. Um, I will send your rough draft back to you, and I'll, I'll tell you, here are the suggestions, here are the changes, here are the fixes you need to make, and then your final is due on November 30th by like 12 o'clock midnight. Like it's very kind of you guys, some of you will at seven o'clock at night on Monday, you send it to me and you say, I'm so sorry, it's late. It's not late until Tuesday, okay? So you have until midnight Monday to turn that in. But this rough draft, you could go ahead and do it this week. All right, go ahead and get it done. Um, if I have time, I will go ahead and make edits and suggestions, send it back. Um, you can turn them in any time before. It doesn't have to be that Monday. It could, if you get your rough draft back and you're like, I'm going to get my final copy done this week. All right, I will try to help you with that, I promise. All right, but do make sure that you pay attention to these so that you don't turn them in late. This paragraph is due. Um, well, the, the whole essay is due. So you got to write the first one. Uh, this is what I'm looking for right here. Just follow this. Do you want us to edit our second or third one too? Yes. On this rough draft? Put it in with the edits and the changes. Yes. Yes. Because if I if there still need to be changes, you got one more shot at it. Yeah. Um, this was a 100 grade. Your rough draft is a 100 grade if it's on time. The final essay is where I'll grade it according to this, um, and that's where points will be deducted only on the final. Okay? One more thing. Let's look at the last paragraph, fourth, fourth paragraph, your closing. Okay? This is what I'm looking for here. All right? These things right here. As long as you've answered these and have paid attention to what I'm looking for, you should be okay. All right? Any questions about this, this assignment? It's kind of funky that it's over Thanksgiving break, but 
Um, you do have some flexibility as far as when you turn it in. If you, if you want to be done with it before Thanksgiving, you can be. Um, and I will try to help you with that. I, I really will. I'm going to be at home. I'm not traveling over Thanksgiving, so I can help with that. All right, but once you send me the final essay, that's it. All right, you, you don't get it back. All right, if you have any questions about um, your, your paragraphs two and three, um, if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to Zoom with you about it. We can talk about it. You can email or text. Um, I'm around, and so I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and otherwise, I hope you guys have a, a fabulous Thanksgiving break. Don't come to class next week. You'll be the only one there. You, you'll be the only one here. You probably won't be able to get in. You're only doing your homework. If you guys will pack up, and I'm going to spray your table. If you'll just take the paper towel that you have. I remember this time. I'll try not to spray you and your stuff. <laughs> Terrific class today. I love the swishy swish sound. Oh, I forgot that circle. Ah, uh, that's okay. Uh, we'll do it the next essay. Oh, yeah. Aren't you like curious? What is this circle you keep putting there? Band words? Those are band words. Yep. We'll do it the next time around. I keep forgetting. It's fine. Is it? Yeah. I keep forgetting. Thank you guys for cleaning those. Oh, Laura, can I do this one? It's fine. I think it was the third time. It'll be April, and we'll still have that circle on that paper. We, you guys will have no idea what, those, what that means. You guys are dismissed. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Yes, I will send a note about that. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Laura. Because I want to go to class in right I want you to be in class. Yes, thank you for mentioning that. I will, I will send an email about that. Thank you, Laura.